show you my packet. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us on our call today. My name is Nicole Van Wert Quincy, and I'm from TransCat, and I'll be your moderator this afternoon. Our webinar topic is Improve Reliability with the Latest in Pressure Gauge Technology. The topic is being presented by Kyle Knudsen from Emerson. He is a pressure instrumentation expert, and he collaborates with engineers to solve challenging pressure measurement and monitoring situations across industries, including refining, chemical, life sciences, food and beverage, pulp and paper, power, metals and mining, and oil and gas. Uh, he lives in Minneapolis and describes himself as a Minnesota sports fan and craft beer and Enthusiast. Uh, he also enjoys camping, hiking, and spending time with his family. We expect today's presentation to last roughly 30 minutes, and then we'll answer any questions that have been submitted. During any time of the presentation, you can send questions through the question box to the right in your webinar controls. I also want to mention that the webinar is being recorded. You will each receive a follow-up email with a link to the recorded webinar and the slides of today's presentation. At this time, I'm going to turn the presentation over to Kyle. Thank you, Nicole. As, as she mentioned, uh, my name is Kyle Knutson. I will be talking about uh, improving reliability with the latest in pressure gauge technology. Uh, Nicole already introduced myself, so I won't go through this slide, but at least <laughs> gives you a picture. Um, one thing I'll add, uh, for those of you who are Saints fans, I'm so sorry. <laughs> this is, uh, but out of all of these that describe me, probably for the last couple of days, that being a Minnesota sports fan, Homer is probably the only thing that's described me in the last couple of days. But for this particular webinar, I will absolutely uh, be talking about pressure gauges. So we'll start with why we need pressure gauges in the first place. A pretty simple question, I think. Uh, we'll go on to the pressure gauge construction, uh, the process conditions that can make these challenging. And, and then finally, uh, some other challenging conditions and ways to improve uh, your pressure gauge technology in these conditions. So starting with why you need a pressure gauge, this is pretty simple. It's a visual indicator of what's going on in your process. You know, regardless of what process you have, you're going to be standing outside of a pipe or a tank, and you want to know something about what's going on inside that metal thing. And a pressure gauge is a great way for you to understand at least the pressure and maybe a few other things as well. Um, that's inside that tank. Uh, it gives you visibility without exposing yourself to any hazards. Um, ideally, it can give you somewhat of an accurate reading. It might be able to allow you to write that down, um, put it in a historian even, but at its core, it's still just giving you a visual indication of what's going on in the process. For a really, really long time, and, and still today, the pressure gauge technology and the industry has been dominated by Bourdon tube technology. This is a technology, it was actually invented by Eugene Bourdon. Uh, it was patented in 1849. And this is a really widely adopted uh, technology. It was adopted really widely then and it still is today. Uh, great sensitivity, uh, great linearity, its accuracy is fairly good. It, it has about nine moving parts, as you can see here, uh, you know, somewhat of a crude visualization, but in the front, what we see is a needle, and that needle moves based on the pressure. But inside there is an actual Bordon tube. There's fluid or gas that moves in this tube. That tube bends, uh, and then there's linkages and pins and levers and gears and axles and springs, uh, each one of those things helping to ultimately move the needle. Uh, again, this is a technology that's been around for a very long time, and we're still using it today. So th there's a lot of challenges that we see today with these Bordon tubes. Uh, I'll, I'll go over a, a, a multiple of them today. Uh, one of them, overpressures, burst pressures. You imagine the gauge is rated for a certain pressure, and if that pressure goes beyond that rating, uh, bad things happen. Uh, for the most part, the result is ruptured gauges. And among many things, the biggest issue here, implication, is safety. Uh, this can expose personnel expose yourself to hazards uh, and certainly any sort of dangerous pressure releases, you know, whether it's uh, high pressure gas or steam, uh, no matter what it is, it's a safety issue that we generally want to avoid. Another one that's incredibly common is vibration or process pulsation. These are happening from two different things. Uh, vibration just means the actual pipe and gauge are vibrating. Uh, 
pulsation has to do with the actual fluid or gas in a pipe or tank uh, pulsating. But regardless, what ends up happening is you get a lot of needle inaccuracies. And this is caused because the needle is bouncing around. I'm sure everyone, whether you use gauges frequently or not, has seen a gauge that the needle is moving around back and forth. And, and the challenge here is that from an accuracy standpoint, you can't really determine the reading. The whole goal of this pressure gauge is to give you some insight into what's going on in the process. But if you can't tell what the gauge is reading in the first place, there's very little insight that you can take uh, when it's, there's vibration or pulsation. The next one is uh, overpressure or vibration just beyond the gauge rating. And, and I talked about this before um, when it comes to overpressure, but there's another thing that can happen, and that's the actual needle can be damaged. And not only can there be a rupture of a Bordon tube, but with all of those different linkages, if anywhere in that process something gets damaged, including the needle, whether the needle itself is broken, in which case you don't know what's going on in your process, or the needle is simply showing something that's inaccurate because it's broken. Uh, this can be a safety issue, certainly, if there is a leakage or rupture, but the mechanical failure also means that you're going to need a new gauge. And it's possible you may not even know that you need a new gauge because the needle might point somewhere, it's just not pointing in the place it needs to. Another common thing is extreme temperatures, extreme ambient temperatures. You imagine many gauges are outdoors, and whether you live uh, where I do in Minneapolis or even in Houston, there can be 100 degree change, temperature changes even within a day, and this can really put strain on gauges. These are made mechanically, and mechanical things expand and contract based on changing temperatures. Um, and you can get some permanent gauge damage if you go beyond temperature limits or simply just strain it too much. Uh, from a reliability standpoint, you certainly have inaccurate readings and without really a good way of knowing that it's inaccurate. And then from a product longevity standpoint, uh, at some point, those temperature fluctuations can cut your, the longevity of your gauge short, uh, ultimately meaning you need to replace it. And then the final thing that's very common is harsh pressures, or harsh processes, I should say. And this is different from just really high pressures that can you know, explode, essentially. Uh, with harsh processes, we're talking about corrosion and erosion. And you need to make sure that the gauge, the actual board on tube, that the fluid or gas is going in, can meet any of so, sort of those harsh processes or chemicals, acids, whatever they are. And if you do get a damage too, uh, just like an overpressure, it's a safety issue because that same content is leaking uh, out of your process and you need to replace the gauge. What makes this one even more unique is unlike a, a high pressure piece where the safety issue might be more immediate, if it's something that's very corrosive or it's possible that it's actually a bad chemical where there could be some long-term effects uh, if this leaks out. So uh, ultimately we have a lot of these challenges that gauges currently face today. And we need a new solution that can, can help you overcome a lot of these challenges and feel more confident that you don't need to replace the gauges and that you know what the gauge is actually reading. So, and this is on TransCAT today, introducing the Rosemount wireless pressure gauge. And I'm not going to talk much about the wireless first. I, I want to really go into what makes this a pressure gauge and, and how the technology is a bit different from your standard board on tube. So what this gauge is ultimately going to do, uh, very high level, it's going to reduce those maintenance challenges. It's using an industry proven sensor technology different from a board on tube technology. Uh, it can improve personnel safety. We're going to eliminate a lot of these hazards that you traditionally might put your workforce through when buying board on tubes. And then you can also verify these readings. It's a, it's a smart gauge. So there's a lot more information than just where the needle is pointing that you can hopefully take some actionable uh, or take some action on what that information says. Uh, from a technical standpoint, it's designed to ASME uh, B40.1 specifications, very standard gauge specifications, an accuracy of grade two, that's 0.5% of span. It has an analog display, and, and this is traditionally considered a digital gauge, but it's interesting to see that it still has an analog display because you want to be able to see this not just right up in front of a gauge, but 
oftentimes need to see a gauge when you're 10 feet or 20 feet away. And so that needle can still be an important part of a gauge. Uh, certainly single or dual scales, again, very common for any sort of gauge. And then a very standard process connection. In addition to all those things that make this wireless pressure gauge a standard gauge, there's three unique pieces. Uh, first is wireless heart protocol. Again, I'll talk about that later in this webinar. And then the other two on the bottom left, we're actually using a piezo-resistive sensor technology. So there's no board on tube, there's no process going into the gauge at any point in time. And then the other piece that we have is a local status indication. It's not an LCD screen that's going to, you know, play a sports game on it. What it is going to do is give you, you know, red light, green indication that can tell you if something's good or bad about the gauge without just relying on the needle to tell you that. And then finally, like any gauge, uh, you can then put something like a manifold or a flange on one of these gauges because the standard process connection is just like any other gauge. So I mentioned the technology. I wanted to go over this piece with you guys. What we're doing here is combining a solid state sensor, a, a type of technology that traditionally is on things like pressure transmitters and has actually been used and proven over a long period of time. Combining that though with the electronics uh, and a radio antenna that can ultimately give you an analog reading via needle. And what we ultimately get there is a pressure reading from a wireless pressure gauge. Going into this piezo-resistive pressure sensor, uh, this is an industry-proven sensor. This is a sensor that many different companies have used over many different kinds of applications. It just is rarely used for a gauge type of application. Uh, one thing that's nice about this is you do have process isolation. The process isn't going into the gauge. And in fact, there's also a separate isolator that can stop any process or hazardous material from escaping. You also get higher overpressure limits because it's not relying on any sort of mechanical piece like a board on tube bending. You can reach a lot higher pressures before any sort of damage to this gauge might take place. And then along with that, from a burst pressure standpoint, it takes a lot more pressure for this kind of gauge to burst for all of a sudden there to be a catastrophic failure. And ultimately, just a robust design. Uh, this is a has great structural integrity, and it's one of the reasons why we can reach these overpressures and first pressure limits. So, kind of going one by one on some of these challenges. Uh, one of them being that fluid could break out. I, I mentioned these barriers. So, as you see there, the first barrier is that isolating diaphragm. But there's a second layer there, um, or I should say the first layer ultimately is probably the sensor assembly, um, but there's two layers, and that's a big key here. If you look to the right, you know that all this process is going in that board on tube. You would need to actually add a separate seal assembly in order for it to have two isolating uh, barriers. And the risk there is that if you don't have those two barriers and you do have uh, hazardous or corrosive kind of media that can leak into the gauge and ultimately leak out of the gauge. You don't see that with a piezo-resistive pressure sensor. Another one talking about pressure, uh, overpressure resistance. I should explain to this group, for those of you unaware, overpressure, it's not saying that all of a sudden pressure then escapes or, or it leaks out. What it's saying is that this is the amount of pressure that that gauge can handle without being damaged. So let's say that you have a you know, 15 PSI gauge. If your overpressure was 30 PSI, that means if you went to 31 PSI, your gauge is now irreversibly damaged. With a wireless pressure gauge, it has up to 150 times what the scale range is. So again, an example here, if the scale range was one PSI, that would mean you'd have 150 PSI that you'd have to get to before you'd have irreversible damage where you can no longer rely on that pressure gauge uh, integrity. What this allows you to do is put this kind of technology in pretty demanding applications, knowing that any sort of pressure spikes are not necessarily going to damage the sensor. Again, with the board on tube technology, oftentimes there's minimal overpressure resistance. It's designed with mechanical linkages that are only meant to handle a certain uh, span of pressures. And if you go beyond that, 
you've bent that board on tube or you've bent a linkage or something that makes it ultimately that not only can you not read the gauge correctly, but again, there can be uh, damage, there can be cracks in the gauge, et cetera. Another one, so I mentioned how overpressure is simply what happens at irreversible damage. Uh, there's another piece, and that's burst pressure. That's when all of a sudden the pressure is so big that it escapes. With piezoresistive technology, those two isolators, what that allows you to do is actually go up to 11,000 PSI, regardless of what the span is. And up to 11,000 PSI, there won't be a rupture of some sort. It's designed to maintain its integrity up to this point, and it makes it very safe uh, for your workers and for the applications you put a gauge in. Going over to the board on tube, there can be minimal burst pressure resistance. It's one of the reasons why many board on tubes actually have, uh, or they're designed to blow out the back. So if an operator or any sort of worker were looking at the gauge and all of a sudden it would blow out, it wouldn't blow out in their face. This is not something that even needs to be considered really with the wireless pressure gauge because that pressure uh, resistance is up to 11,000 PSI, um, nowhere near where most board on tube gauges would be. Again, it's a potential risk for injury of your personnel, uh, certainly for your asset health, and then there's environmental consequences, depending on what gets leaked out. And another piece is just reducing those parts. Uh, I mentioned how the wireless pressure gauge, there's a solid state sensor, a piezoresistive sensor. There's the actual electronics that ultimately move the needle, and that provides you the wireless pressure gauge. And because there's, the needle is the only moving part, there's a lot less things that can go wrong here. Uh, it has a 10-year installed life as a result based on its power module. And again, if you look at the board on two with nine different parts, there's many different mechanical pieces that can slip, that can fail, that can get overbent, over torqued, whatever the case is. And what ends up happening is you have this violent shaking that can't happen with the wireless pressure gauge. You have cracked glass. You have disconnected dials and you have loose dials all because those different parts could potentially get damaged. Again, with the wireless pressure gauge, with only one moving part, it's designed to take all of those, the solid state sensor takes all of that aggressive application and then puts it out in a nice dial format that doesn't vibrate or can give you some more information if something goes wrong. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the actual local status indication. This is not, again, some sort of big LCD screen that's going to tell you in words what's happening, but it still can be a very valuable piece of a gauge technology to give you some more insight, understand the health of that gauge. So the first part is just an LED light. Uh, it's green, it's yellow, and it's red. And if it's green, that means it's functioning properly. Uh, yellow generally is going to mean there's battery is low. It means that you've, the gauge has probably lasted 10 years at this point, um, so we don't expect any of them to happen anytime soon. But once that happens, you know that you can replace that battery. And finally, if the light is red, that can tell you one of two things. Either the battery needs to be replaced immediately, or the device might be malfunctioning. But either way, it's a way that you know and the device knows that it's malfunctioning without relying on the needle to tell you that and this would blink every second. With a board on tube, there really isn't any sort of local status indicator outside of the needle. But as I've mentioned throughout this webinar, the needle is not always the best way to tell the device health. The needle might have an output, but if something has happened internally, the needle may not actually be showing the actual pressure that the gauge is supposed to be showing. Ultimately meaning that if something goes wrong, you don't have any sort of indication. The other thing that the wireless pressure gauge can show is to notify you if there's something like an overpressure or a malfunction. Uh, there are many boron tube gauges out there today where there's actually two gauges, and if an overpressure event happens, one of those dials drops, and it can tell an operator the next day that at some point in time there was an overpressure. That's what this indicator can do. The same thing, the dial can move to that indicator, and you know that something has happened. And then the beauty of this gauge is that then you can connect to it uh, via heart protocol, any sort of heart communicator, and you can see all the pressure variables, the device temperature, any sort of status or indication that something's happened, and you can take action on that. 
And then finally, we'll talk about wireless. I mentioned I'd leave this to the end. Up until now, what you may see is that what this gauge is, is a more reliable gauge than a Bordon tube style gauge for many different reasons. There's a secondary piece of this gauge that really makes it even more reliable, and that's wireless heart protocol. The wireless heart protocol is, allows you to take that information that would be otherwise stranded in this gauge and communicate that elsewhere. It can help you troubleshoot faster, it helps you gain a lot of real-time insights, and then you can communicate with these gauges remotely. There's a lot of different actions that you can take based on this. Uh, certainly, the data can be reported using the wireless heart protocol, using a gateway, uh, similar to the gateway you might see on the bottom left here, you can communicate all of that device information from the wireless pressure gauge back to that gateway, back to a host system, and there's a ton of different variables that you can get as a result. The other piece is you can then verify that a gauge might be functioning properly without having to go out to the gauge to know that. All of that information can be sent wireless, doesn't have to be sent wireless, but if you use that kind of functionality, you now know all of the different variables, all the status, and if maintenance needs to be done, you know exactly which gauge maintenance has to be done to. I mentioned the data availability. With the wireless pressure gauge, up to every minute, that information can be sent over. So every minute, there might be a, a new pressure. Chances are you're not looking at these gauges every minute, but it's another great indication to know that the gauge is working properly. And then you can give maintenance personnel insight into the plant operation. It can also actually improve plant safety. What you can do then with wireless communication is many operators and workers can actually know about the gauge before they go and do rounds. And if something is happening to one of those gauges, they can prepare themselves. They can equip themselves properly before they go out in the field. And if nothing is happening with those gauges, they don't need to put themselves at risk and go into what could be a hazardous location in the plant. And then finally, the communication for wireless is, is very, very robust. Not only can the communication go up to 750 feet in an omnidirectional antenna, uh, you can also, the way wireless heart works is they can bounce off of each other. It is a mesh network. And so in the picture on the right, you see this, what's supposed to represent a brick wall. If at any point in time, a brick wall got between one gauge and another gauge, those gauges would find a new way around to ultimately get back to the gateway. So not only is the gauge reliable in its local reading, but its wireless network is also incredibly reliable and robust because it really can't get disconnected. There's always a new way to get back to that gateway. In summary, what we have here is a pressure gauge that can reduce a lot of maintenance because the actual technology itself not only has multiple barriers, has incredible overpressure resistance and burst pressure limits, and it's reducing a lot of those mechanical components. The other piece here is you can improve personal safety. This is a 10-year life pressure gauge. You don't need to be replacing this gauge constantly. It has a brand that you can trust, status indication to let you know if something's going on, and a battery life that's going to last a very long time. And then finally, you can verify those readings, not only locally, but wirelessly. You can keep personnel out of harm's way. If you don't need to, put them in harm's way. You can report all of that data, get all that data, compile it however you want, and access these pressure gauge uh, readings in a way that doesn't make you walk up until you're five feet away from the gauge to be able to know exactly what that gauge is reading. The Rosemont pressure gauge or wireless pressure gauge is available on TransCat today. It is in 15 PSI, 100 PSI, and I believe 4,000 PSI as well. Uh, here's an example of some model numbers and ordering information uh, for those of you who are interested in knowing more about the wireless pressure gauge. Thanks, Kyle. <clears throat> and it's Nicole again. I just wanted to chime in. Thank you, Kyle. And um, mention that we do have a factory trained Rosemount sales specialist. Uh, her name is Robin Gordon. She's been with the company a very long time. Um, and again, she's been out to Rosemount and had factory training. 
Uh, it's her job 100% of the time um, to help our customers with their Rosemount needs. So um, any questions on the product can be addressed directly to her at robin.gordon at transcat, and um, her extension is listed here as well. Okay, um, I think we're gonna get into the Q&A section of the presentation at this point. Um, and as a reminder, if you'd like to ask a question, please send it through the question box in your webinar controls, it's on the right side. So I'm gonna move to the first question. Um, this question is from Michael. Does, he asked if this comes in a wired version. Uh, due to security rules where he works, um, they can't use wireless. So I can't say that it comes in a wired version in the sense that you would never actually hook a wire up to it. Uh, what I can tell you, though, is that the wireless functionality on this gauge does not actually need to be turned on. So you can use this simply as the gauge. That wireless heart functionality is simply in there if you would want to utilize it. Okay. Um, our next question, and I, I believe you addressed it in your last slide, but I'll, I'll give it to you anyway. What, it, what are the pressure ranges that are available? Yeah, so 15 PSI, 100 PSI, and then I believe 4,000 PSI is the other one available. Um, you can check that out on TransCat, you can type WPG in or Rosemount um, in TransCat, you can find all the different available ranges. Okay, and are they available with higher accuracy than the 0.5% of span? No, they are not. Uh, today, point of, that is the accuracy that the wireless pressure gauge offers. Okay, and what is the calibration frequency on these gauges? I think that's a trick question. <laughs> yeah, it's, you know, with, with any sort of, whether it's a, gauge technology or even a pressure transmitter, it's very difficult to give a, a calibration frequency. It's incredibly dependent on your process. What, what I can tell you is that if your process is within certain limits, and, and you can certainly check this out on the wireless pressure gauge data sheet even, um, it's possible that you may not need to calibrate it ever in your process. Uh, many gauges generally have some sort of routine check that you might need to do to recalibrate or check it. Traditionally, we haven't found that you need to do that with most applications with the wireless pressure gauge. All right, and I, I will mention that TransCat, uh, we do have a calibration business, uh, and we have over 20 calibration labs across the country, um, or, or across North America. So if you do have calibration needs, please um, look to us for that. So the next question, could you specify the battery life, the battery life time and the type of battery that's used? So I may have to actually refer to our expert on that one. Uh, I have Sven Hendrickson in the room, who is the uh, product manager specific for the wireless pressure gauge globally. Sven, do you have a good answer on that one? Sure, Kyle. I just want to make sure I got that question correct here. Um, so you're asking the exact uh, formula yeah, or calculation yeah. on how we derive the 10-year battery life? Yeah, uh, and the type of battery that's used. Sure. So the wireless pressure gauge itself actually uses a lithium battery, um, which is uh, shipped with every device today. And the 10-year battery life specification is actually a combination of a few components. One is the wireless update rate of once per minute. The other is the flashing LED of once per second. And then the other is the actual dial update rate of the device, which um, the dial updates once every four seconds when it takes a snapshot reading of the process. And that's how we uh, calculate the 10-year battery life. Okay. Hopefully that is. Thanks, Ben. Can, yep. this, can this be used for high temperature applications such as steam? You know, I'd have to recheck on the, on the temperature limits. Depending on the steam and how hot the temperature is, it may not be able to, uh, though you could actually install this, you know, with uh, having conduit that's X amount of feet away from the steam to reduce some of the temperature. Uh, there's other ways that you can maybe get to those temperatures. Okay. We have a lot of questions coming in. Um, if the overpressure rating is 150 X, you know, 150 times the span, does that mean that a zero to 100 PSI gauge 
would have an overpressure rating of 15,000 PSIG, wouldn't that exceed the 11,000 burst pressure rating? I can say in that particular example, it absolutely does. It is up to 150 PSI, uh, or up to 150 times. Um, I'd have to confirm actually what the overpressure on 100 PSI is. Fen, do you know offhand what that one is? Um, yeah, so the way that our overpressure specification works is it's really based on what the URL, the upper range limit of the device is. Um, and that varies based on what you have. And we've got uh, detailed uh, background and specs on that listed in the PDS. So, um, and I believe the PDS is, is available through the TransCAD website. So you can always verify with that what, um, I guess, overpressure rating you would have. And that, you know, again, varies depending on what URL that you order. But uh, all wireless pressure gauges do offer an 11,000, excuse me, 11,000 PSI burst pressure rating, which is separate from the overpressure rating. So. Okay. We can look into that specific for the 100, 100 PSI when we get back to you on the exact one uh, before the end of these questions. Okay. I'm going to read this one verbatim because um, I'm not exactly sure what they're saying, but is the pressure module and, and electronics a replaceable part? I'm sorry, can you repeat that one? Yep. Again, I'm reading it word for word. Is the pressure module and electronics a replaceable part? Uh, thanks. Uh, no, it is not. Uh, the, the one part that is replaceable is the battery itself. Uh, again, with a 10-year battery life, we don't expect that to actually happen too often, but that is the part that's replaceable. Okay, are remote displays available for the gauge? No, they are not. Uh, right now, as of now, you have the actual dial itself that is local to the gauge, and then if you use the wireless heart, you can get that information really wherever you want, uh, but you'd have to have your own display to actually take that output. Okay. I do, by the way, have an answer to the uh, to the question on overpressure for the 150 psi, or this, excuse me, the 100 psi gauge that is available on Transcat. The overpressure on that one is 1500 psi. 1500. Okay. Uh, are more pressure ranges coming soon? You know, I don't have an answer for that one, actually. Um, it, it's, it's very possible, uh, but as of right now, the, the ones that are available on TransKit are all that are available, at least for the most immediate future. Okay. Um, there's been no mention whether this technology is provided for. It's, they're, they're saying EX, so I'm not sure if that's explosion-proof or intrinsically safe. I'm assuming explosion-proof applications. Yeah, so... If I'm understanding the question correctly, I think it's it's referring to hazardous location approvals. Uh, all wireless heart technology that we offer, including the wireless pressure cage, is intrinsically safe. Uh, and that's just the nature of, of wireless technology. That's kind of how it works. We're not installing conduit into and putting wires into it where you'd have to contain an explosion uh, like explosion proof would require. Um, but it is, in fact, intrinsically safe. Okay. How often does the wireless pressure gauge transmit its reading to the gateway? So that is every one minute. Um, and in fact, I'll, I'll answer another question too, which may come up, because this can get, can get confused or switched. The actual wireless communication, if you choose to use that, is once per minute, uh, and that's maximum. You can't do any more than once per minute. However, the dial itself is actually updating every four seconds. Uh, it's taking the reading from whatever the sensor is reading, and it's moving based on wherever the pressure is, it is available to update that to every two seconds. Again, that's the needle that updates every four seconds or every two seconds. The wireless communication is every minute. Okay. We've had a couple people ask the next question. Are the batteries replaceable on site? Or in other words, can you do it on the floor or do you need to remove the, the gauge to replace the battery? In a, in a non-IS environment, uh, you, you actually can do that. If, if it was an IS environment, you cannot. But in, in a, in a non-IS environment, you can keep the gauge installed. You'd actually take the cover off, uh, you, the dial. There's a, a screw that keeps that uh, faceplate on, and you can replace the battery that way. 
couple more questions. Um, what I'm trying to understand what they mean, but what diaphragm materials are available? Does that make sense? 316 stainless steel is, is, I believe, the one that's available on TransCat today. Okay. And the next one, could you specify if the analog reading accuracy is equal to the digital wireless output accuracy? Yes, they, they both have the same level of accuracy. In fact, the, the output and where the needle goes are the exact same measurements, essentially. Okay. How accurate is the gauge on the outside range of the gauge in comparison to the board on tube? The outside. Yeah, Sven, if you could answer that one, that'd be great. Yeah, that's that's a good question, Kyle. So I, uh, for those of you on the phone, I think the standard question is, um, you know, typically a board on tube gauge would have a different accuracy rating depending on if it's in the first third, the second third, or the third third portion of the scale range. With the Rosemont wireless pressure gauge, we have the same accuracy across the entire scale. So you have a 0.5% of span um, ref act, whether you are you know, all the way down um, at the LRL, so the lower range of the device, or if you're all the way up at the uh, URL, so the upper range limit of the device. Okay. And our final last question, which I said we probably wouldn't get, but we did from a couple people. Um, a couple of people have asked for like a price range. So it's, it varies widely, I will say that. Um, we're going to send a follow-up email with a link to our website, and I can also have our sales specialist reach out um, to find information on your individual application to get you a price quote. So it's a wide range, um, and we'll get you some more details in the follow-up. Hey, Nicole, I, I did want to mention one more thing that, that maybe didn't come out in the webinar. Uh, we often get a question about filled gauges, about can you put some sort of filling in it to reduce any sort of vibration effects. Uh, we don't offer that option, but the reason is because with the wireless pressure gauge, you more or less eliminate uh, those challenges. The needle can never be moving back and forth. It's updating every two or four seconds based on uh, of the very the pressure at that very moment. And as a result, um, I encourage you to even go on YouTube. You can see comparisons in pulsating applications to see how this is done. Okay. All right. That looks like. Let me see if any more came in. Nope. Um, that's it for. For all the questions, we got a, we had a lot of great questions. Um, if you have further questions that weren't answered, or you'd like to find out more about um, TransCat's product and service operate, offering, please contact us um, at 800-800-5001 or on our website at transcat.com. Again, I will be sending a follow-up in the next few days. Uh, you can also email me directly at nvanward at transcat.com. Thank you so much for joining us today. We hope you got something out of the presentation and that you continue to join us for future TransCat e-learning webinars. And thank you, Kyle. Absolutely. Thank you. Great. Take care.